Shalom to the Holy School. Ah. All right. Um, today is October 27th. Today is the holy gathering of time. Today I matched up with the freaking crone and elementalist. So I'm really glad that we can just co-record this shit together because I'm excited to see what wisdom comes when two people come together who have studied so much to sit a ceremony that just kind of channeled for us today. Um, what this process really looks like um, is if you can have access to your um, things to write on or type or however you do, um, we're going to do a, a holy map of ourselves, of our holy work. And it's going to be um, this thing of my time with Gina has been an interesting re-identifying ourselves so that the shadow work that we've done and the really hard things that we've done and the wisdom, like the really bottom moments, how to have it be not a sick, gross attachment to the things that we've been through in pain, but rather that crone wisdom energy. That's why I'm so glad that Kess is here. Because how do we redefine ourselves by having gone through the story and not still be, you know, I sit, I being sober and going to meetings saying like, I'm an alcoholic, I would be like, I wouldn't do that now. Like the I am statement of like the thing, not to make it wrong, but that doesn't feel like supportive to what I'm doing. But like I am in recovery feels way more powerful for me in like a declaring. Like how do we redefine ourselves? Not from like I'm broken, but like I am whole and trying to figure this out, you know, um, so that we can really serve from a place of crone instead of victim trying to fix things or control things as we navigate this life so that's what i have in store for us um and as far as a opening of space um i'm inviting us to breathe together first um but be after i just said that i feel like Cass, is there anything you want to say of an intention that feels like is coming to life for you or um, I don't know. It feels like your archetype is what I was channeling on this call. So how cool. It's just the two of us. Do you want to say anything here? I think it's awesome that it's just the two of us. Um, I would love to have others, but yeah, no. Um, your, your channeling of I'm in recovery versus the other is I've been working through a lot of shadow emotions lately. Um, and and it's not working through. Nash wants to say something. Um, it's not working through them necessarily as it is being curious about them, being curious about what they're trying to tell me and what they have to say, and then acknowledging and accepting. The accepting part is the hard part for me. Um, because once we accept, then we can move forward. So that's what I have. Mm, thank you. Thank you. And I muted myself because there's a bunch of noises of ambulances. I don't know if those. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So how I have this broken up is a little bit of my obsession of embodiment. So before we get started, I, I want to do some like setting up of stuff. But how I have it set up is... The way that I do embodiment of um, the M of it being EM is the emotions. Um, and how it really came forward is that the emotions are also waters and what they really are at the well of it, the depths of all of our shadow and stuff is also our dreams. So like, how can we be with our story and navigate to find like what we're actually here and to turn that darkness into light in our lives? So um, one of the four categories will be emotions, waters, and dreams. And if you can have it so that there's like a cross so that you have four little things, we're going to go through different types of practices. One of the four, one of the four squares is going to be emotions and that's waters and that's also your dreams. And so if that's like the label of what you note, take there, whatever comes out there, um, that's one of them. And then after M is bod. So that's body. Um, and that's also temple. That's also earth. 
Um, and for me in this identifying thing, it's almost like your resume, like life experience resume, the things we've been through and the things we've accomplished, the things we've created in our fucking certificates. Resume of life. So the second one will be very earthy of the things we've created and our actual bodies. Um, after bod is the eye, I made that into spirit, which for me is breath and air. And this um, is where this morning it came through as council and ancestors and elder. Um, and so um, our meditation we're going to go through this part is if we were to have a workshop that we can start to build ourselves in our meditative space. My friend has a willow tree that he goes to in his meditative space. My other friend has like a wooden cabin that they find. And, you know, they have their safe spaces to go meditate in. And then there's our grandma and this table and the thing, like being able to build that to have a place um, is where the spirit is. So I, uh, for the E, for embody is spirit, breath, which is air and like counsel. Could be God there too, you know, or whatever your God name is. Um, and then mint is for mind. Uh, I put a lot of D's in the type. <laughs> and I just typed into the show. That's funny. Um, and mind um, is actually fire is what came through. Like the mind and our belief system is going to articulate to life whatever we're believing, whether it's destroying things or whether it's creating things. I feel like fire ritual is a way for us to be with our mind. Um, so that's the element that came to life there. So as we work with our mind, um, the big question of what that is for me is the wisdom that we've gotten from working with our mind, from the shadows, from, um, from these hard experiences, being disconnected from the trauma and seeing what we learn from the trauma and navigating that. So those are the four things embodiment and so we're gonna do um four different types of rituals and i have curated some music um and we're gonna go through in an order and kind of come in between each experience and share any wisdom and connect again and have practice transitions in being with different parts of ourselves um and the act of us getting really curious about what our daily practice is and how we move and how we breathe and how we think we should be and what's here for us to put out into the world with like there's a lot already happening in the world and that we're already being with and how can we naturally serve as like a holy culturist in our life so you ready okay great i'm gonna share my music it's so cool being at a place where I have my laptop. Oops, I shared my screen. The other thing is I have to relearn everything. Share sound without that other thing. I don't, I don't, I just want to share sound. I don't want to. Advanced. Share sound. This is a nice thing to be stuck on. How do I not have it? Camera, computer audio. Freaking great. Freaking great. Computer sound. I'm doing it. All right. So for this first experience for... um. For, I'm going to start with the breath because I feel like we start with breath. So go ahead and um, take a moment to just tune into where your breath is right now. And any of those adjustments, rearrangements, straightening, twisting, shaking, anything just to settle in so that you can just be with your breath. Let yourself be comfortable, whatever's comfortable. And really the practice here is I'm going to play some music. It's nice to already hear birds in my background. But to let our breath become the rhythm of the music. There's breath of fire. the, <laughs> But then there's the short broken breaths going inward. And then sitting and then letting it go. But really to be able to, I'm going to let the music play and let our eyes close and let it be. Um, an experience of getting grounded with our breath with music so that if we're walking in our life and there is music for us to breathe with, how can we make that like 
something that just grounds us really deeply in the ritualistic ceremonial person that we are. Um, so that whenever we hear clicking or things to, you know, surrounding sounds, we can kind of sing along just with our breath without having to actually use our voice, the power of just breathing. All right. So the song, I'm going to play it and I'm going to breathe a little loud to start. Um, I started a playlist. It's called the Holy School Playlist. I'm very excited about it. Okay. So a new path. Mm -hmm. Nice little beat. Mm -hmm. Do any sound effects in it, you can, but okay. Inhale, pause. Inhale, pause. Okay. Exhale. Inhale. Long. Hold it for this long. Another beat with your breath. Let the breath straighten your spine, let it move you a little bit, but let you and your breath feel like it. The dance of your breath. Coming in the grass is something I can do. Have you felt the grocery store to be able to hum along and have it between that tickle your fucking fancy and connect to the bob? Whatever your bob name is. I know we're just working with breath, but if your body is so connected to your breath and your body moves, you can just allow it to. I want your breath to be deeper. There's a practice in some of the things. the spine while you breathe. You can inhale forward and exhale back. If I'm driving a long time, it really helps you to do this and breathe while I'm super practicing in town. Keep myself grounded in motion. You can be grounded in the cat. And as you breathe, if there are any questions that come up, start to ask your breath questions. What it might need more in the day. What we might be doing too much of, whether it's holding it or taking too many deep breaths, trying to force deep breaths. Like, what is it? What is our breath? Feel more connected to our body and to our spirit. Breath in Hebrew is ruach, but it's half human, half divine. And the practice here is like you just need your breath to connect to the community of all in one love. And body, loving kindness, vibration. You can find that in your breath, where it lives in your breath, and how it will just be. Rest through your body. There's any popping that is happening, spitting, you know, like clearing into the throat. Hmm. Start to lower the music and start to say thank you to the breath. And if there's anything you wish to capture in your um, in your thing is the spirit and air breath. 
whatever that practice in your rhythm, in your throat, in your voice, in your spirit, whatever feels like in your workshop of your breath, you can capture it down. Shorem Hatshuva Hanolata Hanolad et Akva Hanolad et Akva Ve'im Bashchakim Odena Tzeruha Shama Nishmatcha Vitzro Shorem Hatshuva Hanolata Hanolad et Akva Hanolad et Akva Ve'im Bashchakim Odena Tzeruha Shama Nishmatcha Vitzro And any, if there's any wisdom in that body part as well, um, with the temple and the earth, since air and earth are so connected, <laughs> feel free to put that there. Well. All right. And we can always go back. All right. Um, oh, hi. Welcome back to the council. I would love to hear. I would love to hear anything that came to life, your experience, what you learned from your breath. Do you have mm -hmm. anything you wish to share, Kes? Yeah, that um, there's a way to use the voice for, forceful, uh, powerfully, but gently, mm. which is something I'm being reminded of this week. Um, and that I don't always have to advocate with force of voice. I can use all aspects to advocate, body posture, heart, all of those things 
that the cyclone is received with resistance. Mm. Whereas a whisper is received with curiosity. Mm. And I was a cyclone earlier this week. And received a lot of resistance. Some power. Mm. I mean, we know like what resists persists in us, but just the power of the voice shift within itself, just in the posture. It can be the same words from just a total different energy and it could be received completely different. Mm -hmm. Which then totally influences the outcome. Yeah, of course. Oh. Of course. Let's see right in front. Thank you. Um, what, what came through a lot in my, my air medicine for one is, um, there's, there's something like really rusty in my throat. That's like dying to be practiced every day. Like it needs a lot of work and a lot of attention. It felt like a ner like, you know, the ner nervous system brush downs that we do with our fingers. It felt, it feels like I need to do that just with my breath all over my body. And it's all gets, gets really rusty right here um, and feels dirty. And it's like, I need a lot more water and like a lot less smoke, you know? And like, I need, I need you to, I need you to be really mindful and less coffee, you know, like being more mindful and um, really praying and, and water. Like I just need to water myself a lot more. Um, and, um, and how much more I can be connected to my air bringing in the water and just adding the whole other element of like water being the wisdom, um, how much more I can be open and soft. It softens you when you're like watered, like plants, you know, like we can thrive instead of being in the angst. So similar, different vibe than you of similar softening water, sanding down the hard edges thing. Mm. Go spirit. <laughs> There's a beautiful honeybee around this. Okay, for our second one, this is um our second um experience is more of the body now since we've you know it's natural that we have already warmed up our body. And so the body um in what we're here to really channel is um asking our body and being with our body to lead in this music um and to really have it be that we're consolidating our energy and curating our energy and that's what we're allowing our movement do so it's not so much a big dance but of like if there's actual chords to be cut letting our movements be really intentional to like gather all of our energy of our body so the prayer here is that all of the power that we've given away um, we can reclaim back and also all the power that we may have taken away we can give back to these people um, and let ourselves be sovereign with our body and see what is ours and see what is not. So that's that's the practice around um, the music that I picked. And it's um, it's a pretty simple song with not much to go on to allow us just to use the rhythm to um, do whatever practice is here. Um, so with that being said, however you want to read, just do it. I'm going to put my notes down and my pad paper down. I don't even remember what the song sounds like. No, I will look at which song it is. Loose Ends. Again, I have a playlist now. It's going to be so exciting. Um, and the song is four minutes long. Um, so it's a very short song, and it's because the body will be something that we continue moving. But I really wish for us to consolidate our energy first in this time of um, being so connected to so many people, things, and places. Um, so with that, let your breath deepen and that you'll be in your space and kind of just connecting to your body. Not kind of, connect to your body. And find where this music is in your body and how the strings can be strings that you're either cutting or pulling back your energy. Let the drum beat be something that's finalizing for you. This being like confirmed in comment. Um, yeah.
using the form of shaking and also the printing of the hand, wiping of the crown, the cleaning of the third eye, cleaning out your eyes, your ears, like all the forms in which we digest. Good old shake. My three of the history I just find. All the projections placed on you. Everyone's uh, judgments and whatever that is, if there's any, any, but uh, you back to the ground. Thank you, then no thank you. In your own judgment, but you just picked up from other people that touch you. Mainstreamness, right? Like the, the judge that we think is happening. Let yourself take a deep breath. If you haven't asked your body what wisdom it has for you, you can ask it now that you just moved it. Let yourself capture whatever notes, whatever category come for you. They're all so connected.
Mending your thoughts then, you can always come back, that's the beautiful thing about it. Okay, ah, so transitioning back with your body wisdom, and I'm so curious to hear of the experience and what, what came forward for you. Um, Cass, you want to start? I'm going to do it. Uh, my body was screaming movement daily and multiple times. Uh, I have not been moving as much. I need music. I need movement. I need that. And uh, I need to move my hips mm. and stretch. Mm. Um, the other thing that came through from the body was to return to a saging practice. Only I used to do this saging practice in the morning and it said, no, do it in the, in the evening to give back and pull back all of the energies that have happened throughout the day, because I've been not doing that. It's like, I am bombarding my nervous system and the body's like, no, I protect the nervous system. I am the first line, the front line of that nervous system protection mm. we need to honor it um, and to protect that body bubble throughout the day. Because again, it, it my body is my temple to be treated with reverence because it is the front line of protection for my emotion body, for my mental body, for my nervous system. It is the it is the vessel that contains all that makes me who I am. And if I don't keep that bu bubble intact and whole throughout the day with consciousness, then it can't do its job. Mm -hmm. um, and then the last thing that came through was to move with mindfulness but freedom and mm -hmm. i'm like okay that's kind of seemed incongruent and yet not so much yeah so that's that like all my... new intentional freedom yeah exactly and i use the movement to do some cord cutting mm -hmm. and some saging mm -hmm. To begin this new intention. Mm. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. Miss Much thanks. Mm. Thank you very much. <laughs> That's the language. Yeah. Um, beautiful. Yeah. It's interesting that you had the legs and the hips because I it was very much like this is you're so good at uh, like you've done it you know it you know the codes of it it's very helpful what would it be like to have the same codes really in the slower part especially as I'm I'm calling in my recovery and something that my body said is like 
I'm stronger than you think I am, even though you don't have the evidence that you wish for. And it's like, yeah, there's like something of like challenging my body and like really getting back to my handstands and, you know, like having these bigger physical goals because being in my body makes me feel so free. Um, just when I feel like the athlete in me and the the warrior in me, the spiritual warrior that just wants to take over the world like one playground at a time, like um, um, she really wants to be played with, but in a sensual way where I'm not forcing myself to get stronger how I used to in swimming, but I'm I'm playing with it. I'm being curious about how strong I am. And so I felt like a little version of me, but it's like my womb space needs to be unlocked almost. So it was like rattlesnake mixed with little child mixed with um, like a drummer and a dancer at the same time. Um, and so um, I, I, I saw a lot of layers of my body and it came from cutting a lot of cords and doing those things of, oh my God, that's not mine. That's not mine. That's not mine. Oh wait, what is here for me? Um, and I love your practice of that. I'm, a, I'm with Gina, who's a, who is a little bit of a pyro, um, but it's great because she's constantly burning like the herby things to make the space feel really beautiful. And she's doing all of her work. Um, and so it feels like it's naturally happening around me that this place, even though I'm in the middle of Jersey, is like kind of a bubble. Um, and that feels really important for me to have in my life in my van. So thank you for bringing that into the space. Body, build strength sensually. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Game on. And like in, in, in the call of like the holy culturist, how far I've come in loving my body. And like, I'm ready here to like teach people that. And I do it in my photography and I do it in all these other ways. Um, and how am I like still in the deep learning and without like, man, I've gone a long way. It doesn't be that like I've come so far and now I get to learn this new part of, oh, it's so sensual and intimate. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay. Ah, just changed my whole setting. Okay. Ah. Um, and so um, we're going to transition to the third one, which is I, I went to emotions, which is waters. Um um dreams and this is um the e the embody e so it's like using we started with the breath which is a lot of e and now we're returning to the breath with the lower e of our heart um and so really here um i have a song to receive just to be with our hearts um so however you wish just to listen to the song i'm going to ground us um and if you wish to lay down and listen to it if you just wish to close your eyes or whatever that is um i have a song to receive and then i have a song afterwards to actually um be with yourself um it's a song talking about love and self love and if there's any of just like holding the heart if there's a like i saw some people maybe writing a letter to the heart i saw some people doing some motion around it i saw um people drumming like whatever that is but like a song for the heart and an action that would ode the heart whatever the heart tells you after hearing the first song it's kind of some free time to find what your heart wants and to actually do an action whether it's a movement write a poem you know do whatever it is um take some time to make an altar even if it's just an experience for you and your heart okay any questions does that is that clear yeah okay cool okay Ah, so go ahead and let you be in your space. Um, let your eyes close for the first one, if that's how you're receiving the song. But at least have it be that you're, you're with you and your body. Inviting your breath to deepen. And for you to start to knock on your heart, however you do, whether it's your breath or actually holding it or calling it forward with the sound like however you wish to have that part of you really present a face come to mind or a moment a dream a heartache whatever it is let your heart be here mm. and let your breath be let yourself be and let yourself receive
the song transition and you find your own transition into responding to the heart singing a song for someone who is pure light Feels a little like harnessing the sun in the middle of the night. You see, some souls, yes, your soul was brought into my life for reasons so clear, but trace them to speak them out loud. You were so. You are kind, you are Whoa, nah. Advancing with your flaws on your sleeves Dizzyingly brave in this world of pretense So I will follow you, my friend Won't 
you show me how you howl at the moon covered in sand and starlight? And I will comfort you, my friend. I will learn to open my heart and choose and to embrace the fear. Under the pouring rain on a winter's day, or running across concrete too hot for our skin to bear, atop of mountains or deep in the belly of the sea, I think how sweet it is. To be sisterhood, how powerful the heart can be. Oh, openness divine, and I know how rash and brutal I tend to. But I'm learning. Yes, I'm learning. I, I will follow you, my friends. Won't you show me how you howl at the moon covered in sand and starlight? The fear. I will learn to open my heart and choose and to embrace the fear. Oh, oh. I will learn to open my heart and choose and to embrace the fear. And letting that ritual and if there's anything you wish to capture in any of the four, whether it was your bodies or your wisdom of your waters, something you found in your breath. Let that be captured.
Letting those final thoughts be captured. And this last part um, is really um, the simpleness of the resume of our experiences. And after having done all of these things, the thing that I thought would be really powerful was to actually do some tapping on the body and our mind to see where our mind is and our beliefs. You know, there's like the thing of guided, but I get curious if I'm like, huh, what does this want to say? And it's like, uh, I love you, you know, and then be able to see what what belief systems we have to unlock. And it could be like, ouch. I'm like, what's the ouch? And it's like something stored in the body until we get somewhere else and see what our beliefs, our messages are that are stored in our body that are here for our mind to hear as we just listen to some rhythm song um, and let yourself tap wherever you feel called to tap. And the idea here is to collect the wisdom from your life experience as well as have a moment to be like, I'm Reiki certified. I'm a human design person. I'm a poet. I'm a writer. And then also like, and my body, my messages are from my body in this moment. It's current wisdom of reality so having the mind and that part of our holy culture is kind of combined everything together so with that being said i'm going to put on the song and let yourself tap if you're new to tapping um the idea here is to get to your spots. use the tapping on the shoulders underneath your arm. Yeah. into it. I do this if I want to capture anything. The I am statements are in the statements as word. Let your taps also remind you of all the things that you have, you, that your body has walked through, that you you've navigated. Other schools, mystery schools, or mainstream schools, or other schools. Well, like getting over 
addictions, leaving marriages, you know, like things that you were like, I did that. I did those things. Whatever that is for you. You're someone who likes to rake out your nervous system. It help. Wow, that's people who are exactly breaking of the veins. There's anything that your body, your spirit, your mind want to tell you that adds to this option of wisdom dream. or asking the parts of you that you're touching, the breath, what else there is to capture this current identity. And if this is the last time of us being with ourselves and our bodies, if there's anything you wish to transition through to finish up, any of the other things you wish to practice, any of your own practices that you wish to do, this is the final song before we come to close and share our last wisdom and close up the space and, and provoke the next thought of really coming back to this with let yourself use this space and this rhythm and the rising Appalachia as a prayer for the Appalachia blood circle. Sorry, not to be in this space. Appalachia people. Without knowing why this document is here and what's here for you. Let yourself fill out whatever's really here. And if you have everything you just to move your body, it's the beautiful view.
depth we seek. We must be still, take heartbreaks, hold fire, flood lines and earthquakes. Depths over distance, deep roots and charred ashes, hardship, carved stones, bring the passes and scars, make us beautiful and flawless individual. Take time, take a breath, make it physical. Scars make us beautiful and flawless individual. Take time, take a breath, make it physical. Depth love. We must be still. Take heartbreak, soul fires, flood lines, earthquakes. Depth over distance, deep roots and charred ashes. Hard shapes, carved stones, bring out the passes. Scars make us beautiful and flawless individual. Take time, take a breath, make it physical. Scars make us beautiful and flawless individual. Take time, take a breath, make it physical. That was the slowest bring down ever, the most graceful. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you for being on this journey with me. I'm so curious of what just happened for you and your experience, because that was quite a thing. So do you wish to share? Uh, yeah, I kind of had a thing. I kind of had a thing. I kind of had a thing. Um, interesting, uh, the, the mind, the, that the mind and the, and the fire came together, because it's like, take the mental chatter to the fire. Mm. and then I started playing with it it's like fire holds the eternal wisdom mm. well water holds the eternal wisdom okay so where is that fire plus water equals ether mm. ether holds the eternal wisdom mm. I was like wow okay mm. and hadn't put those quite together in that particular way so I'm like, okay, take the mental chatter to the fire. Wow. And so it's also in a way giving up to spirit, giving up to the elders too. You know, like you worry about this thing I can't figure out. <laughs> yeah. There you go. It's all <laughs> yours. <laughs> the the <laughs> God box, but I, I saw two altars, one of fire and one of water right next to each other. And they're oh, just being like something that they could just hold both at the same time, you know? Yeah, well, when you add when you add water to fire, fire starts to extinguish, but it also extinguishes the water into ether. Yeah, it's Full just cycle. this beautiful thing that. Mm. Yeah, it's like that's what I was seeing. It's like, oh wow, okay. Thank you for that wisdom. It's very elementalist of you. I love it very much. I love it very, very much. Yeah, when I saw the mind go to the fire when I was grounding myself for this, I was like, whoa. And so I was excited to bring the elements in. So, of course, it's you and I playing and are walking with the elements. I love this play. This was a really good play. Mm. Really yeah. Good today. And as far as the, you know, as far as the mind and the, a lot of times when people talk about their identity and their story, they have to say the actual story of what they've been through. So I wanted to create an experience that has the wisdom come forward from the story without having to tell the actual story. And mm -hmm. I find you having a great way of doing that, of not needing to say the whole situation of what you're in. I'm like, how do you say I'm the caregiver? Like there's so much more to it and the way that you take responsibility and also keep it neutral without it being, you know, there's a lot to learn. There's a lot of emotions around what you're doing, you know, and, um, mm -hmm. and uh, how to own our identities with a way where, where it's in service to ourselves and the people. Yeah. Yeah. Well, beautiful. Um, As a way to close, I wanted to give a sneak peek of like what the future is. And it's really um from this, you know, and actually having the resume of the certification, you know, we, we laugh about our resumes, like our actual resume, but like, <laughs> this is a way of a resume actually being created where it's actually a, a start of kind of like an archetype and values and things that we can play with. And now that we've received all of this wisdom from our body, if we were to give ourselves 
a week long program, how would we give ourselves the program and to future it? If it would be like you sit with someone and you do however you consult, how would you be like, okay, that means like, let's do breath this many times, you know, like how would you, what Mm -hmm. kind of program would you set up for someone else? And then how can you set that up in your week to play with it this week to feel the energy of it? And, um, for us to see what offerings are here that we get to walk through the obstacle course. It's like us creating the social network of the Holy School and being like, oh shit, now we got to go through the obstacle course and our obstacle courses were very different. Um, so um, <laughs> uh, so now we get to go through our own obstacle course, obstacle course based off of like being here. So um, I know you Beautiful. said something about being in the sage at night and everything else. I'm inviting you to write it and let it be a thing. And um, I double dog dare you to put a price on it. If you were to like offer that to hold space for someone else, you know, and like what that would look like in holy culturist world. Double dog dare. Dang it. You would have to pull that out. But it's just, it's just putting a little ass on the line, stretchy marks on it. I mean, of Oasis for caregivers. I mean, you know, like this is kind of mm-hmm. like a beautiful thing of offerings for Well, I am putting my ass out there because I was talking about it last night with people that, you know, saying this is what's going to come. So the ass is on the line. And how cool would it be to have these things set up for people to be like, hey, we have program. These are the different things you can choose at the Oasis if they wish. The breath worker, Mm -hmm. you know, like it could be really great. Yeah. Yeah. The Um, Oasis needs a fire pit. Yes, it will need a fire pit. It, will it need needs a fire. a fire pit. It will have to have a fire pit. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck yeah. I'll tend that fire. Um, and to close this time, I really would love for us each to say um, who we're dedicating this time to, um, whether it's a teacher or someone in our life or something in our life, just to bring forward some gratitude of other people places and things or dreams or prayers um and uh i i mean i we do this for humanity in the world and i also um i i really dedicate this to my sisterhood and the dream weaving community i really do um i'm so grateful for how many magical people are willing to say yes to their dreams and like do something that feels out of place and feel place in it. And um, I'm very grateful. <laughs> you took the words right out of my mouth. Ah! Literally. <laughs> ah. Dedicating this to sisterhood because prior to dream weaving, sisterhood in the truest form was non-existent in my life I viewed it with suspicion and paranoia (laughs) so I dedicate the the transformation of the sisterhood that is ongoing Mm. dedicate this time to that because without that, I would not be who I am today. And the scars on my heart are gentle reminders of experiences and lessons learned that created who I am today, right now. Mm. Mm. I love you. I'm grateful. Mm. Sugar. I'm grateful too. I'm gonna I'm gonna end the recording. Hey you people. I love you. Oh I do it up here.